How's it going guys? Will here and a couple of days ago I saw a pretty interesting conversation between Jonathan Morrison and Linus Tech Tips on Twitter. Well, I say I saw an interesting conversation, didn't really read most of it, it was kind of long. I think it was about the M1 silicon chips. Nevertheless, the topic of mobile editing came up, so I had an idea. Today, I want to see if I can edit a load of 4K footage from this Canon EOS R, and when I say edit, I don't just mean cut, I mean sound, colour grading, titles, the whole deal on this iPhone 12. So for this, we're actually gonna be testing two pieces of software. Jonathan Morrison only showed iMovie. However, as we're gonna discover later, I also tried out Premiere Rush and got some pretty interesting results. So first of all, let's talk about the actual editing experience. I went ahead and tried to load all my footage into iMovie, but for some reason, a lot of it didn't actually work despite being the same codec and file size as the clips that were working. Now I did try resending myself these clips as well as re-downloading the clips and restarting my phone, but for some reason, a lot of them just wouldn't work. And that's a little bit weird to me. I mean, this is shooting H.264. So the fact that iMovie was having so much trouble, little strange. In the end, I did have to transcode the clips to 4K Apple devices in compressor. And once I got that done, everything could be imported and I could get on with the edit. Now, as far as the edit actually went, to be honest, it was actually really smooth. I could rearrange, trim, split, and scrub through the timeline with absolutely no issues. And actually editing on a phone screen was really intuitive. And and before I knew it, I had a feasible edit. I also dragged in a music clip from Epidemic Sound. Again, no issues there. And decided to push this a little bit further. Now, in John's test, I saw that he dragged, I think it was an FS7 clip. I wanted to go a little bit further, so I actually attempted a mild color grade in iMovie. Wasn't ideal, but I definitely got something. I had a lot of fun playing around with the presets, trying to get a nice looking color grade on this iPhone app. And by the time I was done, the finished sequence was about 50 seconds long. Next up, it was time for the export, which is kind of the main benchmark. Now, obviously, I was exporting in 4K, and it was faster than real time. Let me just remind you, on an iPhone with color grading, that's a little crazy. That said, due to the incompatibility of the file type, I was a little bit disappointed with this test initially. But thanks to some well-placed advertising, I remembered about Premiere Rush. I reinstalled it on my phone and I still had all the non-transcoded files. So I decided to see what would happen if I just loaded them up in Premiere. And it worked. Right off the bat, I've got to say, Adobe Premiere Rush is a significantly better software than iMovie, at least in my opinion. I mean, iMovie is free. I think it comes with every iPhone now. But if you do have a Creative Cloud subscription, I would strongly recommend checking this out over iMovie. First of all, the trimming was a lot more intuitive. You actually got a pretty good visual indicator of how much of the clip you were trimming off. And I'm glad to say that this wasn't at the expense of ease of use. Both pieces of software are extremely intuitive, but Premiere Rush just seems to be a little bit better designed. Another thing that was significantly better in Premiere Rush was the color grading. Now, Premiere Rush actually does have a whole plethora of really good presets, whereas in iMovie, they do kind of look a little bit more filtery. I used the Film Looks preset to color grade all the clips here, and then I took it another step further and actually added one of their stock motion titles. Now, this actually looks something like one of the titles I'd use in one of these videos, and I've got to say, I think it's pretty cool of Adobe to include this stuff. Again, once it came down to add the music, because you can actually see the waveforms in Adobe Premiere Rush versus iMovie where you just get that green bar. Cutting to music is much easier in Premiere Rush. That said, how did rendering do? It's all well the performance being good, but as I said, rendering is often the main benchmark. And I'm pleased to say with this 50 second export, it was around the same time, which in my opinion, especially with how Apple usually optimizes their own software really well, is awesome to see. So I don't know about you, but these results certainly interested me. That said, let's answer the title of this video. Can you edit 4K video on a phone? Yeah, should you? No. Let me explain what I mean by that. For one, to get the footage across to this phone, you either need to send the files via iCloud or AirDrop. And to be honest, neither were a great experience, especially when you're dealing with the enormous file sizes of the Canon EOS R. And just being able to put an SD card in and load the clips onto your computer is much faster. Also, the software, as good as it was, there is a fair amount of limitations. As I said, there were no real color grading options in each. So unfortunately, you wouldn't be able to grade anything like log footage in these. Not to mention a total lack 
like if anything like warp stabilizer. Also, we'll find for like a 10 minute editing session. When you're on like a 16 hour editing marathon, getting everything done on a vertical screen like this, not ideal. Not only are you going to have a fairly small image preview, but having such a small timeline and scrubbing through it with your finger, not exactly ideal for long editing sessions. That said, I recognize the types of videos that I edit aren't the target audience of these apps. And I actually do think for a lot of people who want to get started in video editing, an app like Adobe Premiere Rush or iMovie on the iPhone is a great option, even in 4K. As I said, it is very intuitive. It's easy to learn. I think, as I said before, iMovie is like free on iPhones as well, which is handy. And in the specific use case that I'm currently talking about, you're going to be using iPhone footage. So chances are you're not going to have to send gigabyte plus files over iCloud or like have any of the import issues. And so I think for making little travel films or vlogs, or just learning the mechanics of editing, this is a really nice solution and the performance was great. I still can't believe how well it actually handled that footage. That's kind of crazy to me. Anyway guys, so that's it for today. Let me know by the way if you've ever tried any editing on your phone. As for now though, as always, thank you for watching. Remember to like the video if you want to see more content like this, then smash that subscribe button. I'm done for now and I will see you guys in the next one.